Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Four New Zealand Sevignon blocks from Marlborough and one New Zealand Sevignon block from Hawke's Bay in today's video. Um, so um, I might as well set in with the Hawke's Bay one. It's uh, Rod East Hope Sevignon uh, from uh, Hawke's Bay, as I've just said. Uh, Rod East Hope, um, ex-wine maker at uh, Craggy Range. Uh, I, th I think he's, I don't think he's there anymore. Um, before that he was at Rustenburg in, in uh, South Africa. And um, anyway, let's see. This is this is his own operation under his own label. Let's see how he gets on. Well, I, first thing I, I smell is it's um, when I think of Marlborough, I think of Marlborough as being sort of quite loud and uh, uh, in-your-face style. Hawks Bay Sauvignons tend to be a little bit more subtle in the way that um, uh, sometimes uh, Loire Sauvignons can be quite aggressive is the wrong word, but certainly in-your-face aromatic, uh, and then Bordeaux a little bit more gentle and with a bit more weight behind them. This is, I think this is the lowest alcohol of the lot, 12%, but uh, it feels like it's, yes, not majoring on uh, those huge gooseberry and asparagus and tropical fruit, uh, but um, quietly confident. There's a slight green pepper edge there. Um, the, uh, uh, some people say, oh, Mephoxy pyrazines. If you want to chuck that into a conversation, people will think you know what you're talking about. Um, and it's a characteristic that um, some people like and some people dislike. For me, it's one of those, if it's there in the background, I don't mind it. Here, maybe it's taking a little centre stage, just that little bit too much. Coming across as being like crisp apple, rhubarb, citrus, um, and this green pepper. And it feels like to balance that out, uh, in order to not make it too assertive, it's left a little bit of sugar in there. I'd have almost wanted him to uh, pick the fruit a bit later. Uh, and uh, if he's, yeah. I'm not a winemaker, but uh, it feels I, I, I think the fruit could have ripened a little bit more to try and get rid of that uh, that edge there. So maybe that's what he's looking for, but uh, doesn't doesn't really hit the spot for me. It's okay. Um, next wine, I think they, all of, all of these are 2012. Actually, they're not all 2012. Last one is 2011. But uh, let's just dig in. Uh, first uh, Marlborough one is Tin Pot Hut 2012. Now this is on that richer, uh, fuller-bodied, um, aromatic, slightly sweaty edge. Um, nice sweat, if that makes sense. Well, maybe it doesn't, but... Uh, uh, and then you've got the grapefruit. Uh, you've got uh, that, uh, that strange tension between um, uh, citrus and tropical fruit. And um, it, smells, it smells like it's going to be young, but tasty. Again, when you come to taste it, some of that sappy green pepper. Um, here it feels like the wine around it is a little bit uh, uh, rounder, richer, and um, yeah, fuller in, fuller fleshed uh, than the uh, than Rod East Hope's wine. Uh, I like it. I just find it a little bit um, a little bit angular at the moment. But um, we're in November. Actually, no, we're not in November. We're in December now. Uh, so it's a pretty young wine. Um, I find that uh, so for me the best uh, Southern Hemisphere Sauvignons. Um, which would have been bottled, they're usually bottled about, I don't know, July or something like that, uh, July, August. Uh, when they first arrive in the UK, uh, like November, December, they can be a little bit gawky and it, often they take like six months to maybe even more to uh, to really get to their, their peak. Uh, sometimes, t the ones that taste uh, good at this stage, sometimes I'm a bit suspicious about them because uh, often they're propped up with residual sugar. Here, uh, it, it feels like there's a touch of sweetness, Not it's not a sweet wine, but what, what I mean by a touch of sweetness is there is some residual there to uh, soften the blow if you want to call it that but um, it's okay but I think it's going to be better in about three months time. One of those that um, I think will grow on me I, I, I come back to it and uh, there's more of this minerally character coming out and um, yeah getting better by the moment. Um, wine at number three is uh, Grey Wacky 2012 uh, Marlborough Sauvignon. Grey Wacky is uh, Kevin Judd's wine. Kevin Judd was uh, for a long time, um, I think I think he started off as a winemaker and then was general manager at, uh, at Cloudy Bay. So, uh, but uh, it's been, I can't remember what the first vintage of this was. Was it 2009 or 2008? I can't remember. Now this isn't quite as bounding out of the glass as the Tim Pot Hut one. Uh, was. Um, here it feels a little bit more laid back and subtle and, uh, well, like Kevin itself, sort of quite quiet to start with, but then opens up and uh, extra layers emerge and uh, um, it feels for me like a wine that um, I was saying before about the Tim Pot Hut as being one that uh, needed a few months to uh, to get into its, uh, um, get into its stride. Here feels like even more of a 
a, a really closed in wine. There are clearly things going on in there. There's this, this, nice, this nice bit of gooseberry, there's the asparagus, bit of the citrus, some herbs, some mineral, uh, but um, it's right, come back tomorrow. And when you come to taste it, there's more of a mineral uh, profile than, uh, than the tin pot. None of that green pepper edge, maybe just a little bit uh, lurking in the background. But um, it's this purity and freshness. It feels like a really uh, sleek panther-like Sauvignon. Uh, and um, it's pretty good wine, that. Um, and uh, yes, it's strange. I was saying about uh, thinking it, it, it would need to need quite a bit of time to show show well. Today it's looking actually not bad. I, I think aromatically it's got some development to do, but uh, in terms of when you come to taste it, it doesn't feel like there's too much there that is disjointed. Um, nice balance, uh, freshness, richness, poise. I like it. Wine number four. Actually, the, the last two are 2011. Um, so we'd have three 2012s and two 2011s. And the first 2011, Lay of the Land, Destination Sauvignon Blanc 2011. Really don't know very much about this. This winemaker, uh, Mike Patterson, blah, 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 parcels of grape in the Waihopi Valley. Give it a whirl. I like mandarin oranges here. This, um, do you remember fruit salad chews? I don't know whether they still make them, but uh, like the, the smell of the orangey bit in there, not the cranberry bit. Uh, but um, uh, it smells softer than the the previous three. Uh, that extra year has uh, has given it a chance to sort of relax into its bottle. But um, it smells like it's going to be rounded, quite sappy, but with this um, mandarin orange uh, sweet richness, if that makes sense, tempered by freshness. It's okay. Um, maybe this is just a little bit too jelly-like and that mandarin character persists but it goes mandarin jelly rather than uh, uh, mandarin orange um, and um, yes I, I, I think the previous two are more complex and more interesting wines here it's a pretty solid drink uh, you wouldn't, if you're a Sauvignon fan you'd uh, certainly would have no problem uh, uh, enjoying quite a bit of that um, personally, I find it, yeah, just on that simple side, it's, it's, it's okay. Final wine. Um, we are still in Marlborough, Esque Valley, um, and uh, is there any particular cuvee? No, just the regular Esque Valley uh, 2011. Now, this is on that slightly sweaty side, uh, and, but uh, the, whereas the, the, the extra year here had just given a little bit of softness and mellowness. Here, some of the fruit has gone into that uh, tinned pea, tinned asparagus character, and uh, yeah, just maybe uh, accent too much on the vegetal. It's okay. Um, gooseberry pie. Uh, that, that's the character. It's like this tension between sweet and sour. But there's also this uh, tinned pea character uh, lurking in the background. Uh, I, I, I was saying about how some Sauvignons need a bit of time to, um, uh, to show their true colours. I'm just wondering whether this has already shown at its best. And it's, it's on a gentle decline now. It's, it's, it's okay as it is, but um, uh, I miss some of the uh, mineral perkiness that was uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the, the two 2012s. And uh, yeah, replaced by this soft but ever so slightly flabby middle age. Um, Grey Wack is the star of this this quintet for me, so uh, maybe uh, I've got one more Sauvignon video to do after this, so uh, maybe uh, come the end of my 15 Sauvignons, uh, I'll uh, have a glass of that, but um, I may not. See you soon.